I have to make a confession. <laughs> there were two big failures in my life. One was when I finished college at the University of New York. I applied to uh, a, uh, several different graduate schools to do graduate work and to do my doctorate. And I was accepted by all except one, Princeton. <laughs> Princeton turned me down. And then when I finished my postdoc at Princeton, okay, I applied to a large number of different uh, corporations, and, uh, different universities and, and corporations uh, to uh, do a career. And I was accepted by all except one, the Rand Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> so they turned me down, but afterwards I did do some consulting for them, and uh, yeah, I did do some consulting. You know what? Let me tell you a story about the Rand Corporation. In the summer of 1967, just after the Six Day War in uh, the Middle East, um, I. I came to the Rand Corporation about two months after the war. And you know, that, that war was extremely hairy, extremely hairy. It was touch and go. And if it wouldn't have been for the, um, for the grace of God, uh, you wouldn't see me sitting here. Uh, now, this is always true in any case, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Generally. Huh? Well, but specific, specifically about the Six Day War, we had a lot of. You see, you were in the military at the time. No, no, no. Uh, I was. Uh, if it wouldn't have been for the fact that the Egyptians stupidly left their planes on the ground at the beginning of the war, then. Uh, their air force would have overwhelmed ours and the war would have gone differently and literally you wouldn't see me, okay? But it, it, they, they did leave their planes on the ground and we destroyed their entire air force uh, uh, within one hour at the beginning of the war and that turned the tide. So it could have been different. Now, when I came to the Rand Corporation, uh, and let me add, at the, the, the period leading up to the war, there was a very, very great tension. I was really worried, really, really worried. Anyway, when I came to the Rand Corporation in August, this was in June, uh, these uh, military types over there said to me, uh, you know, the generals uh, walking the corridors of the Rand Corporation, they said to me, Bob, we were never worried about you. You know, we knew that you people would come out on top. So I said to them, if I would have been sitting in Santa Monica and you would have been sitting in Jerusalem, I wouldn't have worried about you either. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so why don't we uh, start talking about this game theory, which has been uh, going around in our talk. And uh, what would be your definition of game theory today? And what was it uh, in the class that you taught when Bob was sitting in there as a student? Well, I didn't teach game theory until I think a later time when I was at MIT. I, I was there a few years ago teaching calculus. And there came a time when I taught uh, uh, from a book by uh, Luce and Rafer. I think that word book wasn't out until a little later in the 50s. 57. Yes, so that was, that was a good book, and I, I liked it because they were more sympathetic to my contribution mm -hmm. to game theory. And, uh, it, uh, so they were already in the book in 57, your contribution? Yes. Ah, it was to some. Mm -hmm. uh, But in any case, what is your definition of game theory? 
And that's, that's where I'm a, a little reticent to see that, like, any you things are changing, and, and, and uh, you're not sh uh, sure what it would have been. The same words would be meaning 50 years. So, uh, so you think it's better not to define it, right? Well, not, not to give too short a definition, you can say. Game theory is really what is being called game theory by, a, by good examples of, of use of language. This is what sometimes people say of mathematics, too, right? Mathematics is what mathematicians do. Oh, yes. Or right. What is, what, is it regarded, what is regarded by mathematicians as being mathematics. Oh, okay, good. And you have a different definition, or you agree with the fact that the no, 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 I, I, I think I can supply a reasonable <laughs> definition, but uh, but I'm tempted to, to tell a story about mathematics, for a okay. uh, definition of mathematics. And here I'm quoting Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell said that mathematics is a subject where A, we don't know what we're talking about, and B, we don't know whether what we're saying is true. Okay. And, uh, what he meant by that, it was a wise fact, but what he meant by that is we don't know what we're talking about because uh, mathematics is based on axiomatics and in axiomatics you start with undefined terms, okay? So we don't know what we're talking about, the terms are undefined. And B, we don't know whether what we're saying is true because uh, all mathematical theorems are of the form P implies Q. Uh, the, it, it's only if P is true, then Q is true. But if, <laughs> you never know whether P is true, so you don't know if Q is true. Uh, so, uh, so, so that was his, his, uh, his definition of mathematics. I think I can provide a better definition of the game theory. Uh, game theory is the uh, discipline or the science, one might say, uh, which deals with uh, different entities, usually different people, who are interacting with each other but are striving towards different goals. And the best example is a game, like chess, where uh, black and white are interacting, and black wants to win, which is opposite of uh, white winning. So you can't, they can't both win. So they're striving to opposite goals in the case of chess. And usually, in most games, it's not opposite goals. In the most important games, uh, like the international relations, the internal politics, the economics, the all those areas, even biology, the entities that are playing the game are not striving to opposite goals, but they are striving to different goals. And they have to take that, each side has to take that into account in um, making its moves. So uh, that is how I would uh, find it. Good. How many entities? Two or three? What? Uh, in Star Trek, you could even be one. Yes. Uh, and and split and zero. Yes, split and zero.